MTRC's fare adjustment has been rejected by the Hong Kong government. Perth becomes the highest water user in Australia, thanks to your company. Also in the news, Boombox Parade comes to Perth and President Obama has proposed spending cuts in the US. The Hong Kong government has rejected calls for an immediate review of the MTRC's fare adjustment mechanism. The Transport Secretary Ever Zhang told legislators that the review could be conducted only next year because contracts signed when two railways merged in 2007 stated that a review is carried out every five years. The MTRC also says a 2.3% fare increase must be implemented in June as the system has specific dates to ensure transparency. Figures released today show Perth households have the highest water consumption in the nation. The report by the National Water Commission shows Perth households use an average of 267 kilolitres of water a year, double that of Melbourne and Brisbane. A spokesman for the Water Corporation says there are numerous reasons why Perth's consumption is so high. He says Perth has less summer rain, the sandy soils prevent gardens from retaining water, and cities in the eastern states have much stricter water bans. Last year's Boombox Music Tour generated a huge success in Melbourne and Sydney. The organisers have decided to bring the same famous YouTube celebrities to Perth this year for a mammoth parade. The performing artists including Kev Jumper, Jesse Lee, Andrew Garcia and the others. I spoke to one of the organisers exclusively. I hope to achieve a long-term uh, investment into this music concert, such as like bringing more artists over to Perth and make Perth into an entertainment hub. A lot of famous YouTube personalities will perform live on the stage right here in Perth. Raphael Lim's dream is to make a difference for Perth music industry. He also has confidence that this concert will succeed as the Asian minority in the city will turn up to participate in this event. Yes, I think it's going popular, especially with the influx of uh, migrant uh, Asians as well coming over from uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia. I mean, we can see that these are people, these are the market that we want and I can see the potential for, for this growing business. The event will be held at Tuesday, May 17th in Winthrop Baptist Auditorium. Tickets on sales now on the webpage below. Also that day, DHK News will have exclusive access to behind the scenes, so please stay tuned to our news broadcast. America, Britain and France leaders have signalled their determination to fight on in Libya until Muammar Gaddafi is gone. In a joint statement, the leaders warned it would be an unconscionable betrayal were NATO to cut and run with the dictator still in power. David Cameron, Barack Obama and Nicolas Sarkozy said in a joint statement that as long as Gaddafi is in power, NATO and its coalition partners must maintain their operations so that civilians remain protected and pressure on the regime builds. The defiant statement came as warplanes were again heard over Tripoli, accompanied by air raid sirens and loud explosions. However, as the military operations approach the end of the first month, there is little sign of a breakthrough on the ground where our rebels appear more than matched by the government forces. NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen has also had to appeal for more planes to conduct airstrikes, with many member states unwilling to join the front line. Although the US have officially stepped back from an active combat role, President Obama's involvement in the latest statement may quell speculation about the strength of its commitment. Ships away, DHK News. U.S. President Barack Obama has proposed spending cuts and higher taxes on the rich to slash the U.S. budget deficit. The American leader has said the cuts would amount to $4 trillion over 12 years. In a sharp political speech, he also laid into Republicans' plan for a deeper reduction, saying they were too radical. This debate over budgets and deficits is about more than just numbers on a page. It's about more than just cutting and spending. It's about the kind of future that we want. It's about the kind of country that we believe in. After the March 11 earthquake forced the Sendai airport in Japan to shut down, the first passenger jet from Tokyo has landed on the airfield this Thursday. Isabel Huther has this report. The first passenger jet has landed at Japan's Sendai airport since a 9.0 magnitude earthquake forced it to shut down over a month ago. 
The airport was severely damaged by a tsunami which followed the March 11 quake but has now partially resumed domestic operations. A Japan Air Flights flight arrived from Tokyo's Haneda Airport on Wednesday morning with staff greeting passengers as they left the plane. Volunteers from all over Japan are expected to use the airport to visit the disaster hit areas and accelerate relief activities there. Six shuttle flights will run per day and Japanese self-defense forces and the US military will also use the airport to transport relief supplies. Commercial operations in Sendai Airport had to be suspended after the disaster submerged runway and affected the control tower and terminal building. The state television reports that international flights should resume from Sendai Airport by September. Isabel Hofer, DHK News. Time to see Braden Edwards with the latest sports. Braden. Thanks guys, good evening. I'm Braden Edwards presenting the week's sport news from across the world. First the AFL. Adelaide defender Richard Tambling has been ruled out of the club's clash with Port Adelaide at Amy Stadium on Saturday night, while forward Taylor Walker will need to pass a fitness test tomorrow to keep his place in the team. Tambling injured his ankle at training on Thursday and has been replaced in the side by rookie Matthew Wright, who was elevated to the senior list earlier in the week. Walker has a sore glute and failed to train on Friday, but coach Neil Craig said he was confident the enigmatic goal kicker would be fit to take on the power. Port Adelaide also has an injury concern on the eve of the showdown, with injury ravaged forward Robbie Gray nursing a leg complaint. Manchester City striker Carlos Tevez is out of Saturday's FA Cup final against Manchester United. The Argentines suffered a hamstring injury in Monday night's 3-0 defeat by Liverpool at Anfield and will be sidelined for three to four weeks. The 27-year-old has scored 22 goals in all competitions for the Eastland club and is widely considered to be the city's most important player. Manager Roberto Mancini acknowledged his absence would be a problem, but said the team couldn't take any risks. He was also reluctant to reveal who might take Tevez's place in attack. He did say Eden Zeko and Mario Balotelli were both a chance. That's all the weekend sports. Have a great weekend. Ivan, Anna. Thanks, Brayden, and that's DHK News for tonight. Thanks for being with us. Good night. Good night.